Now decibels is a unit that is very often seen in electronics here and to generate a, a voltage or a current representation in decibels you typically relate it to a specific value. So if you want to calculate dB volts you would take your signal, the input, the one that you're interested in and relate it to one volt. So if you have one volt as a signal, as an amplitude, you would divide one volt by one volt and the logarithmic of one would result into zero. So that is zero dB volts. Approximately doubling here is giving you two divide by, volt, uh, by one volt as the argument for the logarithmic. And if you multiply that result then by the factor of 20, as you do for voltages and currents, you would get another 6 dB addition on the logarithmic scale of dB volts. So going up another factor of 2 from 2 volts to 4 volts would then approximately be 12 dB volts. And if you would have, so if you come from 1 volt, and you go to 0.5 volts to 500 millivolts, you would actually have minus 6 dB volts. Similar for tenfolding, you start out with one, one volt, we had the 0 dB volts, same as on the left side, and if you tenfold your voltage, if you amplify it by a factor of 10, then you would get an addition in the logarithmic scale, and this is a precise addition of plus 20 dB volts. If you tenfold again, you will get another 20 dB volts if you tenfold another time. So three times tenfolding here would be a factor of thousand in the argument of the logarithmic function. Then you would get plus 60 dB on the result on, in terms of dB volts. Instead of using volts as the respective reference for the dB result, so dB volts here, you could also use other units as the reference. So if you would express 1 millivolt in dB volts, that would be minus 60, but if you would uh, want to represent the same 1 millivolt in uh, respect to 1 millivolt, the result would be 0 dB millivolts. And that would be a thousand times in microvolts. A factor of thousand is giving you plus 60 dB in terms of microvolts. And an, another factor of thousand, so a factor of a million in terms of nanovolts. So 1 millivolt divided by 1 nanovolt gives you 120 dB nanovolts. All of these are very common in engineering. You might see the volts more in the power area, the millivolts more in the signal area, and the lower voltage electronics area. Microvolt is more sensitive signals as in audio and video. And the nanovolts are very often seen in transmissions of electrical signals. Now that you have learned about another way, a third way of representing one signal, it's your time to try your skills. Use one of your favorite math tools, whatever you prefer. Pretty much all math tools should be actually capable of plotting these waveforms that I'm asking for here as a function of time and use the Fourier coefficients for their representation. So use the, the Fourier coefficients that have been on the previous slides for the signals, the DC, the sine wave, the cosine wave, the pulses. Add them up together in your program and superimpose them on each other by weighting the different sine and cosinusoidal function, the cosine waves and the sine waves, which are functions of time via the Fourier series. If you'd like to put some numbers on that, instead of using generic 
V peak and uh, period T, uppercase T, you could easily use 100 volts, 5 volts, 1 volt, 10 millivolts, or whatever you like. And you can also normalize the time domain to something that you would want to work with. It could be something in milliseconds, microseconds. It's all up to you. Normalize, use some values if you'd like to, and then play around with the number of harmonics. So how far you actually run the counter of N all the way up to infinity. Well, most of the computers are not going to be capable to run all the way to infinity, but you can actually play around. What happens if you cut off the Fourier series already after the first, the second, the third, harmonic and if you run up to higher numbers the higher you get up in the harmonics that you're using to plot your signals the more computational power you will require from your computer now that you have plotted those and you have the Fourier coefficients already in your math tool you can calculate the spectrum the amplitude spectrum and the phase spectrum for all of those coefficients and plot them as a function of frequency for all of the above waveforms. Again, you can use your assumptions of values and normalizations that you might have made above. For this one, try to play around with the linear and the logarithmic scaling of the x and y axis especially all the x-axis and especially the y-axis for the amplitude spectrum. You might also fancy to plot it in, in decibels, dB volts, dB microvolts, dB nanovolts, and see what happens. Finally, there are two exercises asking you to train your skills for the decibels and convert all of the voltages over here into dB microvolts and the same over here these are given in dB microvolts try to calculate how many volts these are on a linear scale.